Our next video for Math 135 will be on percentages. So this is the first topic we're starting with. It's something that's probably pretty familiar to you. You might say, oh yeah, yeah, I know what a percentage is. I know how to use them. Um, but what we're going to focus on in this class, since presumably all of you have seen percentages before and worked with them, is just some of the ways that they can be a little bit tricky, okay? Because percentages can actually be really, really challenging. Um, and a lot of people use them and don't necessarily think through what it means, right? Or how it works, okay? And so that's what I want to focus on um, in this particular section. So let me give you an example of what I mean. Um, so before we go, just to make sure everybody's on the same page, so a percentage, um, so percent, uh, this is from the Latin, it literally means out of a hundred, so cent, same word for a cent of a dollar is 100, um, so something like 30% is another way of writing the fraction 30 out of 100, right, so 30 out of 100, and that's what this little symbol is short for, it's kind of the out of 100 kind of split up a little, um, or as a decimal, 0 0.30, okay? So any number can be made into a percentage. Um, so if somebody gives you, say, 125%, that's 125 out of 100, or 1.25. Um, if you have something like um, 0 0.003, uh, so if you think about that as being out of 100, that's 0.3 out of 100. So if you take 0.3 divided by 100, you'll get 0 0.003. So that would be 0.3%, 0 0.003. Um, if you had a number like 15, you might think, oh, well, you can only make a percentage out of something that's like a decimal number. But if it's not, it's just going to give you a percentage that's greater than 100%, right? So something like 15 would be 1,500 divided by 100, right? If you wanted to write this as a fraction. And so this is 1,500%, okay? So any number can be written as a percent. Um, if you want to change a percent into a decimal, you move the decimal place over by two points, okay? So 30 becomes 0 0.30, 125 becomes 1.25, 0.3% becomes 0.003, um, 1,500% becomes 15, okay? So that's percentages. Like I said, I'm sure you've all seen this before. I just wanted to review some of the details here. But the tricky thing with percentages is how they're used um, and the way that they interact with the English. So percentages aren't hard, right? A percent is just a fraction or something like this, but the way that we use them in English can be confusing. And so let me give you an example um, of just two very similar problems uh, that we have to solve in very different ways, okay? So um, let me give you two closely related problems. So a uh, computer is on sale for, say, 20% off. It now costs, or let's say it, it Originally, it, sorry, the marker's not working. It originally cost one, uh, let's say $1,000. What does it cost now? Okay. And so you've probably seen problems like this before. This isn't a hard problem, right? It cost $1,000 originally. You're going to take 20% off of that. You're going to take 20% of 1,000, right, and subtract it from 1,000, right? So to take 20% of 1,000, you write 20% as a decimal. So 0.2 times 1,000 gives us 20% of 1,000, which is... 200 if you multiply it out so 20 percent of two of a thousand dollars is two hundred dollars one thousand minus two hundred is eight hundred 
easy, right? And you say, okay, yeah, I got percentages down. But let me give you a very similar problem that is much harder, okay? And this is what I, the point I wanna make about how we need to be careful with percentages because it's a lot more challenging to solve this next one. We have to think about it very carefully, okay? So almost the same problem, uh, a computer is on sale for 20% off. On sale, it costs $1,000. What did it originally cost? Okay, and this is where, this is kind of the meat of where percentages get tricky. Because it's very natural to approach this problem and say, oh, okay, it costs $1,000 now. It's 20% off. So I'm going to take 20% of 1,000, add that to it, right? Because it cost more before, and I get 1,200. Okay? But that doesn't work. That is not the case. If something was originally $1,200, so if you start with 1,200, and you take 20% of that, so 20% of 1,200 is, uh, let's see, um, $240. So if we had started with a price of $1,200 and took 20% off of it, we would subtract 240 and we would end up with 1,200 minus 240, which is 960. So if it had started out at $1,200, and had been reduced by 20%, it would cost $960. So $1,200 is not the correct answer here. It did not originally cost $1,200 because that doesn't give us a price of $1,000 after we cut 20% off, okay? And so we need to be more careful and we need to think about this more carefully, okay? And so this is really where percentages get tricky because what's important here is that we're not taking 20% of a thousand. We're taking 20% of the original price. Okay? So if you think about this, if you started with some original price, which we don't know, and you take 20% off of it, you're gonna be left with 80% of whatever you started. Right? So if we had our original price, X, and we subtracted 20% of X x minus 0.2x, this is going to give us 80%, right? So the new price is 80% of whatever we started with. So 0.8 times our original price is going to be equal to 1,000, okay? And so if we take, to find this original price x, we can just take 1,000 and divide by 0.8. So our original price is 1,000 divided by 80%, divided by 0.8, which is 1250, okay? So you can plug that into your calculator and you'll see you get 1250 if you take 1,000 divided by 0.8. And now if you try this out, start with an original price of 1250, take 20% of that, so 0.2 times 1250 will give you 250, and if you subtract that, you end up with a new sale price of $1,000, okay? So the lesson here is with percentages, with percentages, always ask yourself, What am I taking a percent of? Okay. And what am I taking from that percent? Right? So let me give you another example. Uh, maybe a little bit easier one. Um, but again, same ideas that we have to think about what we're taking the percentages of. Um, so let's see. Um, 
you have, uh, say, 10 marbles, Martha has seven marbles, what percentage more do you have? Then Martha. Okay? So there's a few things going on here. So we've got 10 marbles. Martha has 7 marbles. What percentage more do you have than Martha? Okay? And there really are four different kind of approaches that you'll see people take to this problem. Okay? So four different ways of kind of writing down fractions, dividing one thing by another to get a percentage here. So let me write down what they are. Um, 10 over 7, 7 over 10. Uh, so 10 minus 7 is 3. OK? So these are kind of the four different fractions that you can get from this. You can just take this number and divide it by this number. You can take this number and divide it by this number. You can subtract how many more do we have, 10 minus 7, and divide by 10. Or you can subtract 10 minus 7, 3 more, and divide by 7. Okay? Which one of these is co correct? Okay? So only one of these can be right. You can change any of them to a percentage. But three of these are wrong answers, and one of these is a right answer. Okay? Which one's correct? Well, let's think about it. So we're asking what percentage more do you have than Martha, okay? So we're not interested in what percent is 10 of 7, right? If we asked uh, what percentage do you have of Martha's marbles, right? So Martha has 7 um, and you have 10, what percentage is 10 of 7? We'd be asking something like that. So how big um, is your collection? as compared to Martha's collection, okay? That would be asking uh, for 10 over 7, okay? Similarly, 7 over 10, this is asking how big is Martha's collection as a part of your collection, right? Would be 7 over 10. Martha has 70% as many marbles as you do. Uh, so 10 over 7, um, I don't actually I have to plug this into my calculator real quick. Um, 10 over 7, I should have done this before. So this is 143%. So you could say, my collection of marbles is 143% as big as Martha's collection. 7 out of 10 is 70%. And you could say, Martha's collection is 70% as big as my collection, okay? Because this is the fraction that theirs makes up of yours. Three out of 10, this one is a little bit closer, right? So these are both how big is my collection as compared to Martha's collection. These actually start to get how much bigger, okay? And so three out of 10 is 30%, three out of seven is 43%, okay? And so would you say that your collection is 30% larger than Martha's or 43% larger than Martha's? Okay? It's a good question. And in fact, if we want to get down into the English of it, we're going to use 43% is actually going to be the answer here. And let me explain why that is. So when you say, I have 43% more than Martha, there's kind of this implied bit of sentence at the end. I have 43% more than Martha has. Okay? So my collection is 43% larger than Martha's is. You're thinking about that as being a percentage of Martha's collection. So if Martha added 43% more, their collection would be the same size as mine. Okay? And so that's why it's 3 out of 7. What does this number mean? 3 out of 10? Well, 
This is if you were comparing Martha's collection to yours. So you would say Martha's collection is 30% smaller than mine. Okay? Martha's collection is 30% smaller than mine. Um, Martha has 30% fewer marbles than I do. Something like that. Those are the kinds of statements that you can make. So remember, when you're comparing, you always want to compare to the, um, the one that you're comparing to is what you're taking a percentage of, right? So the bottom number here is always going to be the what you're comparing to versus the change. If you're looking for how much larger or how much smaller, the change will go on top and what you're comparing to goes on the bottom. If you're looking for what percentage a number is of another, so how much large, um, how big is my collection as a percentage of Martha's collection, that would be 10 over 7. Okay? So depending on what you're doing, you choose different fractions to get different percentages to answer different questions. And that's why it's so important to think about what question you're asking before you try and answer this. You can't just divide one number by another and get the answer. It's not that simple. You have to think about what it is you're trying to get, what number you should be dividing by what other number. Okay? And that's the key to percentages.